dear members of white army uh welcome for a special session today uh, for our beloved members we have started a new series uh called uh, authors advice yes there are so many renowned authors of uh, medical textbooks in our country uh, who are authorities in their field in their subject so uh, we have got our own mentors who are also the authorities like that so to get the best of the advice for our beloved members we have started this new series called authors own advice so in the first episode we have with us uh, professor sanjeev kumar mittal sir uh, who is a professor and hod uh, at uh, aims rishikesh he is also author of uh, uh, textbook of ophthalmology by one of the internationally renowned publishers aims publishers so uh, he is with us today when we requested uh, uh, special advice for our uh, members he readily agreed and he is with us today uh, welcome to you sir we are really uh, feel overwhelmed and blessed to have you with us hi everyone namaskar <coughs> i am dr sanjeev kumar mittal with you and uh, thank you mr kishan rao for this platform he asked me for some advice like some of the mbbs students or some graduates who are preparing for post graduate examination entrance exam for some there are, if they need some advice like what yes, is sir. to be done so Thing that is that sir uh, ophthalmology uh, we all feel during our mbbs days we all felt that it's a very volatile subject i don't know i'm right or wrong in my ug days i felt that how much or we read the subject we forget uh, we tend to forget it very soon so we just wanted to know from your very vast experience maybe of more than 30 35 years now so you have seen thousands of students like us uh, so many uh, brilliant students very average students and dull students all variety of students you have seen so from your rich experience what would like to advise us how to uh, go about uh, with the study of a uh, subject of ophthalmology for the university exam as well as the uh, uh, entrance exam uh, point of view please sir yeah first uh, let me introduce my co author of the book like for okay, which yes, he invited me uh, dr okay, rajkumar agrawal yeah. he is also joined us now yes sir yes. in this session uh, and uh, so he is there in the line yes so sir. rajkumar could i speak or you or just uh, you just please uh, yeah, i'll, just I'll just uh, briefly introduce sir also sir has joined us is the co author of the textbook of ophthalmology by thames publishers uh, that is a uh, dr uh, rajkumar agarwal sir he is a consultant ophthalmologist at uh, saharanpur uh, uttar pradesh welcome to you sir we are really feel uh, privileged today to have both the authors with us in our first episode of authors advice program thank you for being with us sir so uh, dr kishan rao and the all the audience who are here who are uh, looking listening to us now particularly i am addressing to all those uh, first firstly those who are mbbs students and those who are studying ophthalmology as a subject one subject of mbbs so at the outset i would like to convey everyone like uh, ophthalmology amongst all the subjects of mbbs course ophthalmology in fact is the sub, one of the easiest subject i mean i like why because interesting subject and uh, you should never actually get worked up with that like the book is so much big the whole thing is not actually in the course of mbbs first thing very important thing so such a it's a subject is very easy <clears throat> and uh, in in fact in clinical subjects and pre clinical subjects para clinical subjects what happens is the contents are not vast in ophthalmology and uh, the jest is that if you just remain <coughs> regular in your classes like your lectures demonstration and attend clinics so i really i mean i assure you that i mean i cannot guarantee this here now because if that i'm mean, that way the training goes on in the medical colleges so if someone is regular in lectures demonstrations and clinical postings so i feel it is very difficult to fail first yes. thing i want to convey this message like uh, one may feel like okay now we will just read from the books it's not like that just reading the books and passing the exam 
you are one is not going to be a good doctor so the attending the classes regularity is very important books are then add on to it definitely so one should try to take actually the notes in the class is a very good habit if someone can take some notes in the class or some people they can just take carry their test book and then they can just add there in the book or just underline what is being taught okay or some points which are not given if they can just note down in the book if they feel as per their convenience of revising the subject so this is a way of actually studying so i mean for mbbs i would suggest this what happens uh, like uh, when we go it with the weird nmc curriculum so the curriculum is much less what are the contents because passing mbbs exam course is limited but when you are appearing actually for your pg entrance then you are expected to read the whole book or particularly what are the things pertinent which comes in the exam so that time you need so that's what is studying the test book is also important number one but more on that is that if you actually earlier listen to the lectures attend the demonstration classes and clinical postings so what happens this way the subject actually it comes to your spinal level the learning comes to your spinal level when you attend the classes so attending the classes i mean these days we see actually uh, the trend is slightly changing so i mean uh, you see like uh, for all my dear students of the we, uh, we are serving the students here so all the students of our whole country are our students we are teachers so they are all our students we are we look for their betterment so i just want to give you a message i mean earlier the course of mbbs the training was such that after mbbs one was actually competent enough and confident enough to even practice uh, these days it has become just something like just a medical graduation you just passing so what happens as a student also remain under stress that we are preparing for pg entrance exam so we have to do mcqs and clinical minutes so what how you can actually maintain a balance between your mbbs curriculum and preparation for pg entrance the gist is now here the summary is that you read a chapter suppose first try to attend the classes regularly read from the textbook then similarly simultaneously go in for that mcqs of that subject if you go with the mcqs of the subject it will actually sort out your problem so your chapter would be prepared and uh, when you go through the mcqs it will be done so like for example dr rajkumar agarwal and uh, we had done with the help of team we came out with the test book of ophthalmology so there we also tried that and uh, simultaneously uh, the, the thema is uh, trying uh, to get in an online platform for the, those students who are preparing for pg entrance also so this test book contents uh, they have been actually uh, moduled into a way with some mcqs and a clinical vignettes clinical vignettes means like uh, the mcqs where the subject the stem part is bigger one there is a clinical scenario and there are four alternatives you have to select one so that is a clinical vignettes so these days in actually entrance exam what happened you get such a big question you go for different examination suppose you go for national board of examination or foreign examination so then you get get a different varieties so you have to need to know like i mean this clinical vignette form of mcqs so that is the thing and uh, when you attend the classes so you know actually what contents you have to read actually and uh, for passing exam like what what are the important things so just uh, if we uh, go like uh, starting from the subject so we all know that disease of the lens means cataract so cataract is most important in ophthalmology then glaucoma glaucoma is very important with the pressure of the eyes rises so cataract glaucoma number 3 iridocyclitis is very important then disease of cornea corneal diseases like corneal ulcer is very important for disease of cornea then conjunctivitis after that you just slightly further then you go like then optic nerve retina okay then you go for the then you go for visual pathway lesions neuro ophthalmology part and community ophthalmology so this is actually grossly divided this and the refractive errors so these are just few chapters like uh, this will cover up your like 90% of the course and then you go to the chapter then i told you as earlier for example just take an instance suppose we talk about uh, iridocyclitis 
so i mean just telling you giving an example suppose we are talking about aridocyclitis so you need not to you need to know like uh, what is aridocyclitis what is acute and chronic what is granular or uh, granulomatous what is non granulomatous then you should know like okay arido aritis cyclitis and then what is choroiditis so their symptoms their etiology in general what has to be done what is the clinical presentation this you will know then if you go further than several like there's a parasitic aridocyclitis parasitic coso you that and at mbbs level basic need is just to know these things okay you need not say the uncommon things are not required so in actually in it's a principle of medicine medical science that the common diseases should be known first yes, common diseases should be known first similarly when you are giving a practical exam you should focus on patient sim uh, symptoms so like uh, we had earlier actually uh, as the doctor krishan uh, rawat asking me that uh, thema actually had actually conducted one webinar so there we had one webinar about approach a clinical approach to a patient with ocular symptoms so that is a very basic lecture and uh, and uh, i would like uh, like uh, sometimes uh, uh, doc, that is a you uh, if the thema can share if they are not that proprietary thing so if they can share that with the uh, the student for the youtube so that actually is the basic so you know the basics okay what diseases occur suppose patient has these symptoms or we actually categorize on anatomical basis suppose this is a cornea so with the cornea what would be the symptoms if cornea gets involved with the disease so we have categorized that actually so once you know the basic then you just have to apply so that's what i said if you attend the clinical postings you will know actually the just you will your thinking process will increase so you would be a better doctor and the same actually application of your existing knowledge your thoughts or your analytical capability would be better for even solving mcqs during entrance test examination because you can use your logic in attempting the question it is not just cramming the things so that's what i said the things will become spinal if you just attend the regular classes this is the key and underline the top things in the either the, the test book those who are very studious can prepare their notes also then you can do that way also and then you know actually exactly for a passing mbbs exam scoring good marks in mbbs that is also important ki like we should good score good marks in mbbs because like uh, that at uh, these things actually matter actually when you after passing even post graduation also you go for some placement or suppose you go for some higher studies so those is score like uh, sometimes it matter if you are going abroad also something sometimes it may matter okay this was the score it cannot be an eligibility criteria for several competition that's true but these things matter actually so this is actually what i feel uh, dr rao uh, for the other student I, uh, i agree with you for most of the things but except for uh, uh, sir although i is a very small organ in the body one of the smallest organs but uh, inside matter is very very vast sir for the 10 layers there are 10 voluminous books in ophthalmology <laughs> even i had this misconception that ophthal is a very small subject very simple subject uh, i can refinish it in 15 day like uh, two weeks i can read uh, your book and i can pass the uh, exam but that's not the real scenario sir <laughs> i found out from my sister who did md in ophthalmology ms ophthalmology that for each layer in retina maybe for 10 layers there are 10 books sir 10 literally 10 voluminous books not even small uh, hand books so it's such a very vast subject and yeah. uh, lot of things lot of things are that to understand uh, concepts and so how to go about that sir for especially for post graduates and all uh, how to go about that uh, such wa vast as well as volatile uh, subject no actually what you said i agree with you i do not deny i actually meant it's a an easier subject for at mbbs level okay at mbbs level when you go for masters degree then uh, there is no end actually to the knowledge yes. then it's a, it's an ocean of knowledge every no, no. subject is an no, ocean no, of knowledge if i tell this to public people no they may laugh at me what is there to read in this uh, small i they may laugh at me <laughs> i say to everyone ophthalmologists are the most uh, knowledgeable means in the say they are the one who studies a lot uh, the most no actually i i i partly agree with you this way actually that's what i said for specialization definitely there is no end to knowledge it is very vast but you see one thing 
like uh, and and i also agree with you in this way that uh, see i mean the function of the eyes are to see and uh, losing a sight means that this handicap so amongst all the handicaps this is a very big uh, sort of handicap so that's why it's a very important subject undoubtedly yes dr rao when you, when you when you told about the eyesight i remembered sir uh, uh, we are celebrating uh, uh, last like fourth night of uh, eye donation fourth night from august 25th to september 8th yes uh, yes so eye donation is going on there yeah. are so many myths about this eye donation sir i heard recently when i asked some uh, person to like their patient parties to donate their eyes they told if he donates in the next uh, life he will be born as a blind so such misconceptions are there sir so what's your take on eye donation and uh, when it's indicated and uh, what are the more common myths it has to be busted see uh, this is the eye donation fortnight and basically you know that like, uh, there are several causes of blindness and the disease of the cornea some disease of the cornea which makes the transparent cornea white functionless so that leads to blindness which is related to the corneal disease and in most of the disease of the cornea the treatment is corneal transplantation and the transplantation as we all uh, medical people at this they know that uh, you have to get the tissue the donor tissue of the cornea from it after the death first thing is that i mean uh, we have we can take it only after the death and within 6 hours of death now the requirement of this donor tissue is tremendous you know like in our country there are around 0.9 million people who are having cornea related blindness so disability due to a corneal related disease is almost 9 lakhs and uh, every year in our country all across the country the collection of tissue it used to be around uh, 1 lakh cornea in a year and out of that almost uh, 50 to 60000 <coughs> transplants were done but after the covid actually you know what happened uh, last two years this thing declined and now in the last year actually in our country the roughly around 31000 of corneas has been retrieved and around uh, uh, out of this 31 around 70% of that has been actually utilized with grafting <clears throat> the myth actually there are certain myths but one should be as a being a medical person one should know like uh, after death the this whole whole body is useless even after brain death so like other organs are being used being used so like cornea if it is donated after death so at least this cornea from the two cornea from one deceased person would serve to recover the visual sight of two persons two patients one one patient's donation of two corneas will serve the uh, sight in two persons so that is the message actually one should have and uh, in fact uh, i mean there's a way actually to pledge it one can pledge on the website also of different national i banks one can pledge and pledge is not always necessary it is one some something like sort of motivation also but after the death of a person it's basically the kith and kins of the deceased they are supposed to give consent they should inform the actually the i bank nearest i bank to collect uh, that tissue if they are willing so that's the thing and uh, this myth is totally you know it's being a medical person this is a something baseless and uh, Uh, we should all actually promote this and in this fortnight there are several activities are being done in our center we also started from today so it's a all long going on week of this fortnight all activities yes sir uh, nowadays uh, as we are commonly seeing many uh, students or in the very young age they are uh, uh, getting lot of refractive errors sir especially our medical students Uh, i don't know whether because of uh, reading constantly for long hours or uh, voluminously you know what uh, many a young students are uh, getting this uh, refractive errors very commonly so what is yes. the most uh, probable cause and uh, how to prevent it see 
the one of the causes is a genetic factor hereditary factor and uh, another very important uh, factor is actually environment i mean the our working habits visual hygiene so excessive use of excessive use of our work work of the eyes excessive use of our eyes like for the work and from the starting age of development of age you know what happens like uh, if the more we have in screen time more of this like we are just focus on indoor activities like computers video games and on mobile screen and from the early age so it these all things are one of the very important precipitating factor there was a time like just hardly 5 or 10 percent people used to have actually refractive errors okay and now you see that i mean we have done several surveys like we also done a study actually here in our ishiga our center also and we all at other places also we find now this thing is going actually around 20 percent and in some countries it's becoming more up till like there was one study it was something around 40 percent also 40 percent people were using spectacles now so the reason is basically it is all actually visual hygiene visual hygiene mean like uh, excessive use of your near vision i mean too much focus on your screens that is a cause lack of outdoor activities these are the things actually and other factors of course hereditary they also play a role okay but these are these, these are the factor over strain of your eyes is the very biggest factor in these days there is a one like a, something some contradiction to this all statement occurs that like earlier it the refractive errors were not detected actually that's what the other prevalence is less in previous studies or previous nowadays we see more people it's not actually exactly that it is because of, you can see because of this reason all gadgets so and uh, basically what we do advise to the uh, children particularly then they come to the clinics opds that uh, basically the our this all development of the eye actually this, uh, this axial length of the eye is completed actually by the age of 18 years 18 to 21 years completed i mean the sense like suppose there's a refractive error it starts developing so in developmental myopia, acquired myopia, which is the commonest effective error, it goes till the age of 21 years in males and about 18 years in females, roughly this age. Okay. But uh, so suppose someone is having a refractive error now. So that person with a refractive error should be very cautious. So do not actually focus much on all the screens, on gadgets or mobile screens. So let the gradually let's just go with that i mean of course keep your balanced diet diet is also important physical exercise is important but simultaneously this is important once you have achieved that age so your power would be stabilizing it will not actually progress that much so these I mean, precipitating factors are should be actually avoided should be reduced actually so that is the my uh, I mean, uh, uh, a point advice about this Sir, uh, uh, next question is some career related, sir. Uh, yeah. Is, how is the branch ophthalmology as a career option, sir? I was, when I was in MBBS or soon after MBBS entrance exam, I was very much fascinated to this branch of ophthalmology uh, because of the reason that uh, it's a microsurgery, very challenging and uh, uh, very fascinating. Second thing, uh, uh, whatever, whichever the incidents may come down, but the cataract will never come down. It keeps on increasing and you do yes. some per day two fake OS surgeries and done. You can earn a lot. Uh, you will have a lot of time left for your family and other things to do. And a lot of uh, technology, uh, technology wise, lot of advancements like a laser and other things. So it's a very lucrative branch to take up uh, as a career option. What do you suggest, sir? Ophthalmology, I mean, um, I think uh, myself and Dr. Rajkumar Agarwal both will agree. I mean, this is uh, one of the very good branches. That's what we had opted this branch of ophthalmology. And it is still actually basically after 1980s, uh, in the 1990s and 80s, uh, there have been a lot of advancement in ophthalmology. And uh, that way, it's, uh, I mean, when you compare among the clinical branches after dermatology, uh, this is the branch, uh, radiology, like uh, this is the branch where you get actually comparatively lesser number of emergencies like if you compare with medicine and surgery and gynae pediatrics so that's what it i mean like you have some surgical skill also but one should know actually like it's not simply just after passing a ms or md course 
you would be actually um, in a competent enough like that's fine but you will need to work at least one or two years more for actually your practical training because you for surgical branch you need more of practice actually your skill should be improved so once uh, like it's a very good branch and uh, like uh, i mean uh, i am actually my opinion is regarding the medical profession is different uh, you some of some people may not agree with me some of the students may not agree with me i feel we should take medical profession with a passion actually so never think of like we want to earn money if you want to earn money go do some business if you have a passion for a medical branches then become doctor because basically what we need actually we we actually in life we want some everyone needs some satisfaction happiness some people get happiness with by earning money some people get happiness when they become good athlete they have some name fame in that way okay so as a doctor when you are treating someone if you are actually curing someone from a blindness so that is actually that gives you a pleasure so basically the pleasure into some giving so that money will come to you automatically it's not an issue money will come to you automatically but if someone really is looking for money so then uh, actually then again the thing comes like if you are really want to work in an ethical way see what happens practically what happens uh, some people they get tempted to join medical profession they see some practitioner in their own city who is on number one top on the top is lot of crowd is uh, having a lot of crowd okay some people they say they have a big hospital big building running going in big cars so they think the doctors are very rich but see the other thing also there are 90% of the doctors also they are just not as rich so it's not basically the people just if you want to earn money you join medical profession if you have a passion that you want to do something because this is a profession this is the noblest profession and this is the only profession where you are actually connecting with the patient even i would say suppose you are in a pre clinical branch suppose you are in anatomy physiology biochemistry and these branches so there you are making doctors you are in a medical teacher so you are you are a part of you are making good doctors so that satisfaction should come to you so if you are passionate about that in your own way you feel like okay i will do a job in a medical college i will be lecture okay i'll join anatomy or physiology or biochemistry pathology some subjects like okay and and i will and earn, earn some handsome salary that's fine but but until unless you are passionate you join that branch so while opting any subject one should actually try to decide after the completion of internship yes. you try to work internship see okay you you have an inclination working in some medical medicine related branches or some surgical related branches or no 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 you don't want this all you want some clinical work also but you don't want to attend so many emergencies so then of course you will go in for dermatology radio diagnosis okay ophthalmology these branches for radio diagnosis if you are going to corporate then by the way you may have to be actually on the screen or nowadays they are reporting with the screen also night night time but you suppose you are working for a corporate hospital but otherwise uh, in ophthalmology also okay you are working in a hospital then emergency you are supposed to attend in private practice you may not attend right but we uh, say this uh, nowadays actually working in a private uh, hospital also or like your own private practice also clinical branches you see several issues also do occur so if someone is joining some big hospital or in a corporate hospital or a group practice that's fine okay or you are in a service as a medical doctor that's fine so it all depends upon your actually passion your capability you know one knows about oneself ki i am what type of man or person am i okay but i would actually just appeal to all who are listening to this please maintain the ethics of medicine maintain the ethics of the medicine i i do not know like as we age or as we become experience gradually with the age you have some more experiences of life whatever things we are doing unethical we will get all like shrimad bhagavad gita says we will get get back all that here so all the bad deeds will be punished also one should keep in mind all the scriptures Thank also say stressing on the aspects of uh, need for passion and interest otherwise without passion you cannot drive longer 
and second thing is uh, ethical practice that's also again equally important and uh, uh, to maintain the dignity and decorum of the profession uh, very important sir and one last question to you yes uh, i have taken up ophthalmology as my career branch how important it is to know about other subjects sir because uh, many ophthalmological conditions are systemic uh, systemic manifestations uh, you know yes uh, so how important it is to have a uh, overall uh, knowledge uh, about all the other su- subjects as well being an ophthalmologist uh i would suggest here actually see when we are uh, studying ophthalmology even at mbbs curriculum we are supposed to know there is a chapter like uh, ocular manifestation of systemic disease so this we should know actually like just for example tuberculosis is a disease which affects every part of the eyeball except the lens which can affect the every part of the which can affect every part of the eyeball except the lens so thing is that like we are supposed to know those things and in a hospital setup or wherever if you are in a practice also so you should know at least common diseases common ailments which affects the eyes another thing just for example suppose some patient is taking steroids so we should know like steroids long long standing intake of steroids may lead to some complication in the eye also like cataract can develop complex right cataract can develop and secondary glaucoma can develop so one should be having this basic information and when someone is supposed practicing general surgery suppose someone is practicing pediatrics and you come across with some patient so don't feel actually i mean limited just look for a referral of the patient refer the patient for that opinion of it. like uh, you feel like suppose there's an ophthalmologist see a patient pediatric patient want to operate for cataract surgery for pediatric if you decide to suspect just get a pediatric referral okay if you suspect some congenital anomaly so for those things like uh, this uh, knowledge is required basic knowledge is essential mbbs student uh, like a doctor is uh, cap- supposed to know a little at least where do you need to where do you want, need to look for that's the, my take about this thank you so much uh, once again professor sanjeev kumar mittal sir and uh, dr uh, rajkumar agarwal sir for joining with us in this uh, special evening session and giving your valuable insights and advice for our beloved members uh, about uh, study preparations and uh, about uh, ophthalmology as a career and also uh, stressing on some uh, important issues uh, on our clinical practice yeah and uh, same publishers were very generous enough to uh, announce a 30% discount for uh, our uh, white army members they have given us a co- uh, co- uh, coupon code of uh, W A thirty, okay. That is White Army thirty W A thirty. In the cart online link will be shared in the below description. So link that in the cart you can apply this coupon code that is W A thirty and avail thirty uh, percent discount uh, for White Army members. Uh, so uh, nice of you, madam. So th- kind of you, uh, uh, and uh, hope uh, maximum students get benefit out of this wonderful book. Thank you so much.